All right. Hi there, and welcome to our first Inventor tutorial. Um, as we get rockin' and rollin' this school year and rockin' and rollin' in this software, we're going to have a couple of tutorials like this, some step-by-step -step walkthroughs to help all of us model the same object so that we can all practice using the same tools and all practice using the software as a whole. My hope is that as we do these tutorials, you're going to become more and more comfortable and more and more familiar with the different tools and the software so that you can start to use it independently. There is going to be a day somewhat soon where I'm no longer going to be able to provide you a step-by-step -step tutorial because you are going to be designing something completely on your own that's totally different from the person next to you. Uh, but that day is still a little ways off, so let's get started with our first walkthrough. Now today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be making a 3D model of a die. So we've all used one of these before, more than likely. We've played many a board game. So we're going to be making this an inventor as a 3D object. As we start in Inventor, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to make a new part. So we can click on new part and it does take a minute to load. Click on it once, give it a second. You might even see down in the corner here, it says loading, it is thinking. Inventor is a large software that takes a few minutes to do its thing. Best thing to do is to click once and wait. Once we are in a new part, we are going to start a 2D sketch. The way that Inventor loves to work is it loves to have you make a sketch in two dimensions and then make that thing 3D. So we're gonna go back and forth between 3D models and sketching very, very often. As I make a 2D sketch, it's gonna ask me to pick a plane to work on. I'm just gonna pick the horizontal one. So this is the XZ plane. So I'm gonna click on that, and when I click on it, it brings me to these crosshairs right here. Now you can see that I've got a navigation cube up here in the corner. I also have a variety of navigation tool on the side of the page. We will use these pretty often. To help in my own navigation, I'm also using a computer mouse rather than a trackpad. Okay. So now as I start making my shape, the base shape of a die is a rectangle, or more specifically, a square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that tool and then I'm gonna bring my mouse to the origin point and you can see how under my mouse there is a little dot that is going to be the corner of my square. I'm gonna click once and then without holding down the mouse button, I can move my mouse around and you can see how the outline of that rectangle is following my mouse. Now I do have some very specific measurements in mind, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type in the dimensions. Y'all can see where it says 0.495 inches and it's highlighted in blue. That is where I'm going to type first. Now it's already selected, so I don't need to click on anything and I don't need to hit backspace. I can just start typing my new number. Specifically for my die, it's 16 millimeters square. So I'm going to type in 16 millimeters. When I hit tab, it switches to the other dimension. So that just adjusted my height. Now I am adjusting the width from left to right. And again, I can type in 16 mm. Now you might notice that even though I typed in millimeters, it really wants to be in inches right now. So it's converted from millimeters to inches. So it's saying 0.630. This isn't the end of the world, but if you have a model that is in millimeters or centimeters and you want to work in that specific unit, a very easy fix, we can come on up to tools, sorry, and document settings. Under document settings, there is a tab for units, and we're just going to change the length from inches to millimeters. Once I hit apply, this has now changed and it is 16 millimeters. The really nice thing about this is I no longer have to worry about typing the MM after each number. I can just type 16, hit enter, and it knows I'm in millimeters. Now that I have my square, I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch, and I'm going to move myself back to my 3D modeling tab if Inventor hasn't moved me already. We have our square, but our next step is to make it a cube, so we're going to do that by using the extrude tool. Now you can see as I'm hovering over tools, they are giving me an explanation of what that tool does and a little bit about how to use it. 
You also can see next to the word extrude, there's the letter E in parentheses. These are quick key shortcuts or hotkeys. If you have your mouse just over your sketch layer and hit the E key, you will now see that my extrude box has popped up and I can start to extrude my model. It does make things a little bit faster. You don't have to do that, but once you start feeling more comfortable with the software, you can. Until then, we can hit extrude and we can start to extrude our model. Now, extruding is how we make something 3D, and you can see it's already selected the surface that we are going to raise so that it's making this a three-dimensional object. Our direction is set, and we are going to set our distance so that it is also 16. So this is a 16 millimeter cube. When I click OK, it's going to close my extrusion menu, and you can now see over here I've got extrusion 1. If I hit that plus sign under extrusion 1, I have sketch 1. These layers are going to be really helpful for me in the future in case I ever need to go back to something to change it or fix it or delete it. So now that I have the base shape of my die, I can go ahead and start adding the details to it. Specifically, I can start adding the dots. Now a die has six sides and each side has a different number, one, two, three, four, five, or six. We're gonna start with the number one. And in order for us to do that, we're going to pick one of these sides and we're going to make a new sketch. Now one way we can do that is by hovering over that face and right clicking on the face so that we get this menu right here. Right down here, we have the option to start a new sketch and I'm gonna click that. Now, the numbers on our die are represented by circles, so I'm gonna grab my circle tool and I click once. Again, I'm not holding down the mouse button. I've clicked and I've let go. And when I click a second time, it's going to go ahead and set the size. Now that's awfully big for the number on a die. So what I can do after I set the size is I can change the dimensions. The dimension of our circle is going to be four millimeters. That's a lie, it's gonna be three millimeters. So I'm gonna type in three and I'm gonna hit enter. Now, since it is our one side and I've only have the one die, I do wanna kind of move it. I can do this by clicking the move tool and I'm gonna to have to click twice in order to actually start moving my circle and then a third time to place it. So the first time I click, I am selecting the shape or the entities that I want to move. The second time I click, I'm clicking the base point. For my circle, I'm just gonna click the center, and this way I can start to move it, and I click a third time to place. Now I've just roughly estimated what I think is about the middle. Rather than roughly estimating it, we could also dimension it to make it in a very specific spot. So using that dimension tool, I'm gonna to click first on the edge of my circle, or sorry, the edge of my square, and then on the center of my circle. When I click on those two, it's gonna calculate the distance between them. And you can see right now, it's saying it's 7.47686665 millimeters. It's actually pretty close. I want my center of my circle to be at eight millimeters from top to bottom. So I can type eight, hit enter. And also eight millimeters from left to right. So same thing, except for this side, I just clicked on the side and I type eight, hit enter. So now that dot is perfectly centered. As we go on, we will generate a lot of these dimensions. We do not have to have them on our screen. So what we can do when we are all done is we can click on them and delete them. And most of the time, unless we have a ton of dimensions, it won't actually impact where something has moved to or the size that something is. So now I've got my one. I'm gonna finish my sketch because that's all that I'm doing on that side. And I can go ahead and pick another side, start another new sketch. And this time I can start making my two side. So I can go ahead and I can make my circle at three millimeters. I can make a second circle or I could also copy the one that I've already created and make as many copies of it as I need to. Then I can go ahead and I can dimension them and put them in the places where I want them to be.
Since we have two, they're going to go in opposing corners. So one's going to be in the top left corner, the other's going to be in the bottom right. In order for us to get it in the right spot, it's going to be four millimeters from the top to the center of the circle and four millimeters from the side to the center of the circle. Same thing, just opposite corner. We're doing four millimeters to the side and four millimeters to the bottom. Okie doke. And we are still at 16 millimeters all the way across. If you ever happen to get a pop-up box like this that says that this dimension will over constrain the sketch, it is not the end of the world. What that might mean though is that by adding that dimension, you have said too many measurements and some of them are either the same measurement or they are conflicting and might be confusing. So if we hit accept, cool, it gives us that measurement, but we can't change it whatsoever. So even if I double click it, that measurement is stuck, I cannot edit it. No big deal, we don't actually need it, just wanted to show us what that looks like and what that means. Now again, since all of that is set in place, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these other measurements just so they're not cluttering up my sketch. And then we'd finish this sketch and move on to side number three. Now for the sake of making this video a little bit shorter, rather than taking you through all of those measurements, what I can do is I can remind us that there are some die in my classroom, so some dice that you can use. You can look at what they look like so you can see how all the numbers are arranged. Number three, everything is in a line. Four, we're in the four corners. Five, we have the four corners plus one in the middle. And then for six, we are in two lines straight down either side. So what we do from here, slash once we have all of our numbers, is we're going to then inset these numbers so that you could feel a slight difference in the surface so you could see more clearly and also feel what number each side represents. We're going to do this using our extrude tool again. And on this one, since we have several faces, it didn't automatically select, but instead it's asking us to. So I can go ahead and I can hover over a face and you can see how it's highlighting green. And as I click on that face, it's going to show me what it would look like to extrude it. Now that is the wrong direction. I wanna go ahead and extrude it in, but rather than it going the entire 16 millimeters through the die, I'm just gonna do a little bit of an offset, so one millimeter. I'm gonna do this for all of the holes that I have. And I can even select a couple at the same time. I can flip them, set them to one millimeter, and say OK. So now when I were to 3D print this, I would be able to feel a little bit of a difference between this surface and the numbers so I could feel what number the side represents. Now speaking of feeling the die, if we were to 3D print it, if you've held a die before, you know that it's not a sharp pointy object. The corners are all kind of rounded. That is a tool that we have here as well. It's called our filleting tool. What our fillet tool is it adds that rounded edge to our object. So when we click on this tool, it's going to ask us to start selecting edges and it's going to ask us to establish a radius. We're actually going to keep this radius of two millimeters and we're going to select 12 total edges around our die. So all of these edges right here are going to get rounded. Now as you go around, as you click on an edge, it's going to show you what it will look like once that is rounded. This is not set in stone until you click OK. And if you need to, you can always click Cancel if you accidentally selected an edge you did not mean to select. What I do want to do since I'm grabbing all of the edges is I can navigate around my cube, make sure that I've got them all. I should have 12 edges that I am filleting when all is said and done and then I click OK. Now you can see that we've added over here to our layers, so we have that fillet layer. What you may even choose to do is you may even choose to fill it around the hole so that that is less of a sharp circle and more of a gently rounded one. Now since the hole is rather tiny, if we fill it to two millimeters, that's a pretty big change and when we have like numbers of four, five, or six, it's gonna start to run together. 
So I would recommend doing like 0.25 on the top and even the bottom so that we have a little bit of a rounded circle or a rounded hole. And we can do that to all of our sides. We can come in here and we can fill it. And again, we're able to select multiple things at once. So as I'm moving, what I'm doing here is I'm clicking the center scroll wheel of my mouse and clicking and dragging, and that's allowing me to pan around my screen. So I can click and drag and kind of move through my environment so that I can select multiple things. I can click OK, and when it's done, I will have filleted all of the holes here on my die. So that is our first tutorial walkthrough. And ideally, at the end of the day today, you are going to have a full die with six sides that have all of the numbers represented, one, two, three, four, five, and six. All of those numbers are going to be filleted so that they are smoother circles and the edges of our die are going to be filleted as well. As you are doing this, the biggest advice that I can give to you is to take your time, stay calm, and don't panic. We will get plenty of practice in this software this year, okay? One other super important piece of advice slash a thing we absolutely have to do is we have to save our work. Inventor is not a cloud-based program. So those of us who have used SketchUp before, that is cloud-based. Inventor is not like that. It does not save our work automatically. And if we were to exit it, if we do not save our changes, they are gone forever. So we have to save our changes before we leave our software. We can do that a couple of ways. This icon up here at the top is our save icon. You can also see as I'm hovering over it that it says to hit the control and the S keys. Those are our hot keys or our key commands for that. You can also come over here to file and save. Please use save rather than save as so that we don't make multiple copies. Saving something saves it to this copy. Saving it as creates a new one. So save it. I want us to get in the habit of making our files easy to identify, whether we're on our computer or we are on a USB drive. So I want us to get in the habit of naming our files as either our initials or our last name and a brief description of what we've created. So I could name this Marshall Dice or JM Dice. You'll see that the file type is an inventor part, so a .ipt. That is what we want for this specific instance because that will allow us to open it back up in inventor and continue working. Now where we save it is just as important as how we save it. We have to make sure that we're saving it in our OneDrive. So what that means for us is we're going to go to this PC and under network locations, you should see your student ID. If you click in there, you can make a new folder that says Miss Marshall's Engineering, whatever you choose, but we're going to save all of our files here. Especially since we are operating in the remote desktop, we need to make sure it's saved here so that we can continue to access them. So we'll go ahead and save, and that's it. We're good to go. As you are working, if you have questions, please refer back to this video. Go back in time uh, to specific moments where we talked about filleting or extruding if you need to. And remember that you can also use your classmates as a resource. Good luck. Have some patience. You're going to do great.